Okay, what up, what up, everybody? It is time for another video, and, um, yeah, okay, I'm recording this in the morning again, because, like I said, woke up way too early, did the top 100 for sword, and now I'm going to show you guys how to solo the Frost Escalation uh, Heroic. So, my Chain Blades happen to be level 20, and I really want to work on some other builds, so I'm going to clear this really fast this week. Uh, Death Blossoms will be your blade of choice. Why? Because, I mean, okay, look, if you want to do this without dying horribly and without getting frostbitten you're gonna need a crit build i'll do a video like i promised on how to clear the frost escalation easily because so many people are having trouble with the frost um i'm not sure if it's bugged or if there's something else going on but realistically speaking you can eliminate frost from being a problem by using the avatar of destruction combined with a crit build so this is designed for that and as for why we're not using the frost wolf bastion build which is obviously stronger are you really going to use a frost element in a frost heroic? I mean, let's not do that. So we're going to go back to the old Skarn Bastion, even though it's a bit weaker offensively. Uh, it's a bit stronger defensively. So we start with the Death Blossoms, Cunning Cell, Parasitic Cell here. This Parasitic Cell is, again, a cell that can actually be moved. You can, If you somehow feel that you don't need any defense in heroic, you want to go extra ham, swap it for an attack cell, whichever one you want. All right. Special will be uh, Reaper's Dance. Hurricane Blades will be your mod, as always. Skarn's Malice will be your uh, bond of choice, okay? This will help you rack up massive shields together with Bastion and Aegis. So Bastion will be your Omnicell. Uh, Skarn's Defiance with an Etheric Attunement Cell will be your uh, Lantern. Wolfmane, together with a Berserker Cell, will be your Helmet. Drascale Plate with a Berserker Cell will be your uh, Chest Piece. Wolf Claws from the Frost Wolf with Aegis Cell right here will be your arms. And a Thrax's Guile with a Galvanized Cell will be your legs. Okay, this will give you Cunning and Galvanized, which is massive, massive crit perks. But let's let's look at the perks in more detail. So we'll drop the camera for a second. Okay, I'm sorry, don't cry. Although you can't see my beautiful face. Um, Aegis will increase all shields received by 20%. Etheric Attunement will recharge your lantern faster, which means more Skarn Bond uh, UEs triggered as well as more shields, which means more crit, and then when you finally use Bastion, more damage. Berserker, all right? Look, your hit points really don't matter with this build because you're not using Tenacious or whatever, so uh, plus six Berserker is great for you, and you've got plenty of shields to keep you alive. That's the key. Cunning um, will give you more critical strike chance and damage. Galvanize, same thing. Uh, Galvanize pairs well with your shields, and that's where you get your crit from your shields. Parasitic will uh, basically help you delay some damage and give you a bit of lifesteal to keep you alive. And Weighted Strikes comes with the scar and cannot be removed, unfortunately. Okay, so that's basically everything you need. If you guys somehow don't want to see the combat showcase, feel free to like, share, and subscribe right now. All right. Um, if you want to support my channel, you can drop a tip via the link in the description of the video. Join as a channel member. All right. You can send super thanks on YouTube or purchase Asian robot merchandise. Up to you. All right. I'm going to hit the uh, frost escalation right now, and I'll show you guys how to smack things. Oh, my family's sending me stuff. My uncle was uh, sending me a nice message for Christmas. That was awesome. All right, uh, I'm gonna show you how this is done. All right. Um, to put it simply, right, what you're gonna be doing is like just try and crit as much as possible. And to do so, of course, we'll be taking the Avatar of Destruction, and uh, you'll just see us go ham on the creatures. So it's not a complex, like out of all the heroics, right? To be uh, to be perfectly honest. The Frost Escalation is only difficult because the Urska has so many AoE attacks. Same with Torgadoro. Um, the, the biggest difference between the um, Frost Heroic and the Blaze Heroic is that Urska and Torgadoro respectively receive way more AoE attacks, which actually can wipe you out. So that's all you have to really be careful of in the boss fight stage. At this current stage, there is nothing very much to worry about, and you will see that um, as we literally tear our way through the creatures. So I'm assuming you are level 20, because if you're going in with less than level 20, you are an idiot, and you are basically making other people suffer. 
never do that, especially if you play in teams, because I will literally appear in your room at night and smack you for it. Alright, so just keep triggering your Skarns and, you know, get all the nice shields from Bastion, alright? Once you get your Aegis shield triggered and ready, you're basically in a very, very good position. So, make full use of your Aegis shields, alright? They're there for a reason. Slam down as much as possible, alright? No hesitation there. And just keep doing that, and basically, this, this, is, this is literally what you do. This is literally all you have to do, and you will wipe out creatures. Literally wipe them out. And you'll notice your Frostbite is not going up at all. Uh, it's not going up by much, if at all. Alright, and the reason for that is, like I said, if you are, if you have built properly, you will notice that you do not suffer from, um, you do not suffer much from Frostbite because you're literally wiping it out. You see, the more you crit, the more it wipes out. So using it, something like Blade Spin completely uh, removes most of the Frostbite that you're going to experience, and that is basically how this whole thing works. As for some people who mentioned, oh, but what about, you know, Fortress and other shielding stuff? Yeah, those, those are great, but here's the thing. Um, you may not be able to use them well because they are based on... Oh, shit, it's in an awkward position here. They are based on um, not taking a hit, and quite frankly, um, I do builds that don't require... Oh, my God, did you see that Exorcist thing it did with his head? I do builds that don't 100% require flawless play because, look, you really, you're really telling me that you're going to go into the heroic like, yeah, bro, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my fucking best today. You know, listen, listen. I know, we know that we all have off days, we have bad days. My objective as a builder is not to make sure, hey, listen, you gotta play perfectly, guys. You gotta play so perfectly because that's the only way. No, 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 meta build. You know, you gotta. No, 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 no. Listen, if you're, if you're not having a good day, my build's still gonna work for you, and that's the key to this whole operation. I'm here to make sure that you have a good gaming experience, and that's why my builds are the way they are. Um, so they're designed to make sure that you can get through your stuff. See? Okay, cool shots down. Now, this is a heroic, so of course the creatures are going to have more hit points. They're going to hit you hard. They're going to deal a lot of damage. You know, that's why the build is here to keep you fucking alive. Alright? Now, what you want to do is Avatar of Destruction also grants you increased 10% increased move speed, 50% reduced sprint cost, against a guaranteed crit after a short sprint. This is very useful. You can also have gone with Torrent Shields. It's up to you. It's up to you how you want to stack your shields and stuff like that. Um, I like to take all the Avatar of Destruction perks because for me, um, you're, you're literally triggering it all the time. And, you know, having that extra guaranteed crit can sometimes be super useful. Okay. So I like, I like having that little, little thing there. All right. Now, for this whole operation, what we're going to do is we're going to deal with Scarny Boy first. People, are, people often ask me, why Skarn first? Like, Jesus Christ, he's not even a threat. Okay, it's because he's not a threat that you deal with him first. I, I know that may logically make very little fucking sense, but I'm telling you that there's a good reason. Again, it's because he's not a threat that you deal with him first. Think about that for a second. Why are we dealing with the non-threat first? Okay, the answer to that is very simple. You want to deal with the less threatening creature first because that way you can face the more threatening creature in a one-on-one -on -one scenario. Because even if a creature is not very threatening, um, they could become that. They could become very threatening in a two v one situation, especially if you're soloing. Maybe it's not much of a concern in a team, but um, I find that it is much. It is much uh, easier to do it this way in solos, especially. And again, the Skarn actually has high damage. It's got very, very low attack speed, and it's very slow. So people underestimate Skarn, but it actually deals quite a bit of damage and can literally snickerdoodle you, uh, meaning to, you know, completely destroy you in in the heroic escalation if given the right opportunity, because some of its attacks actually hit really hard. So be very careful of that and don't do stupid things, alright, don't take silly risks. Take only risks that you have calculated. If you're bad at math and you're bad at calculating, then I'm sorry, I can't help you, but 90% uh, of the time, if you take a calculated risk, you'll be alright. Now. Again, you'll see that the Frostbite is maintained at very low levels because, like I said, as long as you're critting, the Frostbite is not a problem. If you're not critting, that's when things will be a problem for you. So make sure to properly utilize your abilities and to um, consistently try and crit. Alright, be careful when you use your Bastion. That was a bit risky. Um, so actually, I did a really un-pro gamer move there, the opposite of pro gamer, noob gamer move there. 
um, because I actually tried and triggered Bastion when it was about to attack. Don't ever do that. Make sure you, make sure you're triggering when it's not about to attack or when you're safe from its attacks. Because if you trigger Bastion and um, the attack go the Behemoth attack goes through, you could end up dead, especially in heroic. So be very careful when you use your Bastion, because you can screw yourself over with this type of build. Um, so some people, right, um, due to due to fear of death, they will actually um, choose not to. They will actually choose not to trigger their Bastion at all. Uh, during the runs. This makes it much slower, but much safer. So again, it, it's a personal choice kind of thing. I would trigger Bastion as long as I've got like the Aegis buff up, you know, but in that situation I didn't and that was that was a bad move on my part, but normally I, I'm okay. Normally I would only trigger it when I have the Aegis buff up because it makes so much more sense to do so. Okay, so now the Skarn is dead, you can focus on your beautiful, beautiful Nene. Alright, and with the Nene, all, all you're doing, as always, is just, you know, tearing through it slowly. Okay. Use your Bastion when you want, but just be careful because, again, you don't want a situation. Now, I took that risk there because, number one, I knew I could dodge through the attack, and number two, I was kind of ready. I was kind of ready with the Aegis about to come up, so I knew I was going to pull off some shenanigans like this. And basically, you can dish out a lot of damage. You know, because you always critten, so as you can see, numbers are fairly high, um, and that's that's basically what you want to do for for the most part. And if you feel like it, you know, randomly, I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's after the trial, but you can use your drunken kung fu like like so if you feel like, and you will you will somehow feel better about yourself doing drunken kung fu on your nene. That was uh, what I call a double hit combo, whereby I hit him with a hard attack and then go absolutely ham. Okay, so Nene down. Um, again, Bastion is a, both an offensive and defensive cell. It's very, very strong. And utilizing it properly will result in very good, good, happy things happening. Okay. Utilizing it badly will result in emoness and, you know, tragedies. Okay, uh, I took the buff to Avatar of Destruction, which makes my crits even stronger. Sorry, allergies. And that is going to be another huge benefit, so here we go. Now we're on round three. As you can see, when we do these runs, we don't use any potions, we don't use any tonics. Um, we try not to use any stims, because my objective here is to show you that the build itself will practically carry you through it. The rest is just your skill. If you do, however, in your actual run need to use tonics, please, for fuck's sake, use them. Alright, if, if that's really what you want to do, use them. Alright, I'm not saying, like, it's forbidden, like, you know, your family's going to get cursed if you use tonics or something. I mean, I might curse you, but I won't curse your family. <laughs> yeah. That's a joke, by the way, for those that don't understand humor. Um, basically speaking, a lot of people have been wondering why I don't use tonics at all. Um, again, it's just because I don't need them. And also, this is this is something like a bit of a, a bit of a skill demonstration. I'm here to show you guys that the build works and the build is functional. It is not it is not for me to deny completely the use of tonics. I mean, we joke about it a lot on stream, but uh, legitimately speaking, you do not have to be afraid of using tonics or something like that. Please do not feel like that is the case because that is the opposite of the case. That is not the case. Okay. Tonics are like any other thing, they are a tool in your arsenal. Use them to achieve your objectives if needed. Alright, do not be foolish. Just because I do not use tonics does not mean that you need to abstain as well, alright? Like, if you have them, use them if you want to. But if you don't want to, don't use them. Like I said, I'm here to deliver. Um, a demonstration of what you know the highest level of skilled gameplay will look like um, but it doesn't mean that you have to completely 100% imitate that you don't want to go ahead don't do that okay so here's my drunken kung fu again I don't know ever since the trial because of dealing with the frickin scrave I'm like you know what drunken kung fu works this is just drunken kung fu I will do it I'll just go drunken mode on his ass And in addition to working it, it's also hilarious sometimes. <laughs> so that, I don't know why, it just amuses me greatly. 
Aloha to your face, bruh. There we go. Yeah, it's down. I should use my drunken kung fu again. Yeah, suffer. Suffer. Oh, I actually got a wound, but it's already dead. Oh well. And you see that my frostbite has remained like super low the entire time. As long as you're critting, you're okay. Alright. There your problem is gonna come if you're not critting. If you're not dishing out enough crits, you're gonna have a bad time. So now we have torrent shields, which means even more shields, which means even more crits, which means even more damage on Bastion. So we are in a very good position. And we're gonna, of course, hit Escalation level 90. I remember the first time I ever did one of these, I was like so proud that I got like Escalation level 82 or whatever. I was like, man, that was a long ass time ago. But back then we didn't really re uh, realize how to properly do these heroics. And now, um, now that I'm very well practiced and well versed in all these things, if I don't hit Escalation level 90, I think I failed you. I think I failed you as a both a content creator and a player. All right. Okay, so between the two of these pop quiz, who do we deal with first? Ding, 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 you're right, it's the Karabak. Why? Because he actually has high attack. The Pangar also deals high damage, but it's much easier to deal with. So you want to fight the Pangar later. I know this uh, suddenly, like, you say, wait, 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 Robot, didn't you say earlier you're supposed to deal with the guy that's easier to deal with first? Yes, there are certain exceptions to rule. Karabak is one of them. Why? Because the Karabak has very fast attacks and is a super pain in the ass if you do not deal with him early. Okay, so you really want to kill the Karabak. If you see a Karabak, that thing needs to die first. Please murder the Karabak first. Because, trust me, if you leave that fucker alone, okay, he's going to rip and tear your party to pieces. And it happens very, very often. It is very, very normal for a Karabak to completely devastate an unaware group. Why? Because people don't realize actually how much damage he does. Karabaks actually deal a lot of damage, and you have to be careful of that. As you can see, you can sometimes also have a situation like this, whereby you can't really... Like, because of the awkward positioning of the behemoths, you're stuck in, like, a little, little situation where you can't really attack properly. Okay, that can be problematic for you, but you want to get back to attacking as fast as possible. And again, Karabak is one of the reasons why this is an issue. Because this absolute dillweed, alright, here, here's the problem. This absolute dillweed, also known as Karabak, um, can be very awkward to fight. Alright, and if you get into an awkward situation with him, you get stuck in a situation like this instead as well. Which again, is not good for you. You do not want that. So deal with him ASAP, please. For your own sake and for everyone else's sake, deal with him ASAP. Okay? Keep stunning, keep stunning the behemoths, keep knocking them out. Okay, doing whatever you have to. Get that Karabak dead ASAP. Alright, dodge his attacks as best you can. Trigger your lanterns, keep your shields up. Alright, like I said, the Karabak actually does way more damage than people think. So be, be be a little careful around it. And literally, you'll be knocking knocking the Pangar around during that whole time because he likes to roll. And while he's rolling, he's boopable, as they always say. So yeah. Take good advantage of that to dish out some extra. As soon as the Karabak's dead, alright, you have literally freedom. You have literal freedom, so now you can... Do whatever the fuck you want. You can go drunken kung fu mode like that. You can just wander around, you know. You can wander around all of China being a drunk if you want to, you know. Then found your own kung fu master sect somewhere in the Himalayas. Yeah, it, it works, it works. But basically, all you want to do is um, just dish out massive damage. So make sure you're doing that. And don't get into silly situations like I did. Okay. Be smart, unlike me. There you go. You can see just how much damage it actually takes to wound something in a heroic, so this is why I don't favor wounding builds or wounding damage in a heroic because it, it's pointless 95% of the time. Um, the benefits are minimal, but since the chain blades come with wounding and you can take some advantage of that, use it. But just be very careful, okay? And especially be careful if you're gonna be a bastion boy, yeah? Bad shield use equals dead slayer. Wow, how is that a thing? Okay, you know what, I'm not even going to question it. 
Whack, whack, whack a mole. Okay, Penger's dead. So you've basically seen how to deal with all the different creatures. Um, and now, here you go. It's time for you to happy dappy happy grab this buff. And what will we take here? Okay, uh, out of all these, honest, honest to God, your best choice is probably Thunderous Mantle. Why? Stamina is going to be your friend in the Urska fight. That and, you know, faster movement speed's grand for closing the distance. But seriously, stamina is going to be your best friend here. You're going to see why as soon as we start the fight. Number one, the Urska is a fucking dickhead. He is the worst creature in the history of creatures, maybe ever, in the heroic version. The normal Urska is a... is a cat. You know, alternate word for cat, you know what I'm saying. But... The heroic version can literally one-shot you if you're stupid. And I'll explain why. When he goes up, right, and comes down, when he goes up on the icicle and does the jump down, he has an AoE attack every single time. It is the equivalent of the icicle drop that he normally does when he's at half health in the normal escalation. So what does that result in? That results in very, very bad times for you. So unless you've got an Aegis buff ready to deflect that shit, you really, you really do not want to be on his bad side, alright? So here is where I'm a bit more cautious. I will tend to play it very safe. You'll notice I'm using a lot of my momentum for dodging instead. Okay, this is what we're talking about. This is where you use Thunderous Mantle, right? And as soon as he's ready to come down, alright? As soon as he's ready to come down, you 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 want to you want to dash dodge. You do not want to leave that open, alright? Because why? Because that is going to mess you up. Save your shields. Don't use your Bastion willy-nilly because this is where you will get killed for it, alright? This is where you will get killed for it, so please, please, dear God, be very, very cautious of what you're about to do. But other than that, right, his fight is pretty much exactly the same as how it normally is, okay? Now, I'm going to take a risk there and use Bastion, okay? But that's only because I knew my Aegis was coming up right after, and I'm okay with that. Alright? To speed up the fight, you want to use your Bastion often, but you also do not want a situation whereby you are stuck. Okay, never get stuck. Okay, that's for that's for point hub step bro step sis type situations. Okay, don't get stuck because it's gonna be bad for you. Now, if he launches you because you know Dauntless never fixes their bugs, that's okay. Let him launch you, and then you can literally like be on top of him and let him launch you again. And this kind of thing is very normal. Just know that. But what you want to do basically is not think too hard. Keep whacking him, okay? Keep whacking him, keep whacking him. Where you can, start spinning like a Beyblade, okay? Use you, use channel your inner Beyblade. Blade. Know that, you know, the spirit of, like, whatever Dranzer or Dragoon is with you and shit. And basically, just um, keep, keep slamming when you can. If you miss, that's okay, don't panic. But then, don't use your Bastion foolishly either. I'm gonna use it there because I've got my Aegis buff and I'm, and I'm good enough to build up again. What I mean by good enough, by the way, is not skill, but rather I was talking about cooldowns. Alright, by the time my Aegis buff is gone, I already have plenty of momentum for dodging, so that's what I mean. Language differences sometimes. Okay, um, he's already on half health, so basically you just want to continue doing the same thing. If you want to ride him, go ahead, but don't ride for too long, okay? What I would do is actually just like... Do, do just a short ride and then go back to whacking him straight off because you just want to make sure you're continuously doing that and again I'm unleashing the Bastion because Aegis buff coming up and I was restoring I was already in the process of restoring shields now you just want to be careful again because look what did he do what did he just do there he wiped out a bunch of my hit points I didn't even get the parasitic buff for it all right now he's close to half health, so he might do the, the ceiling drop, so just be a bit cautious about that. You, you probably don't want to um, use Bastion until he's done that. Again, this is the time to use your Thunderous Mantle. Dash around, then go in hard. And this is when you will fully utilize your momentum buildups. And drop. Okay. You've got Aegis, so again, Bastion in. Because this is how you kill him fast. You don't you don't waste time, right? Okay, you're gonna spin, spin, spin. And notice my frostbite is staying very, very low. You know, it, it it will continuously stay low so long as you like continue to understand the principle that crits are your friend. With Avatar of Destruction, that's all you need to focus on. So keep focusing on that. 
Use your Aegis freely to survive, okay? As and when needed. Aegis is your friend. Use it well. Alright? Take attacks when you have to, but don't be foolish with them. Because if you get in a bad situation where you don't have much shields, you're going to have a bad time. But here I have Aegis again, and I've just restored my shield, so I'm good to go. And remember, Aegis blocks one attack sometimes, Behemoths will have multiple attacks, so don't get too overconfident with it. Please utilize it for its intended purpose, and there you go. The Behemoth is down. Okay, so that's all it takes to defeat the uh, Heroic Frost Escalation. You will do it really fast, assuming you know what you're doing, and, you know, take some risks, but don't take too many risks, and just, if you, if you can't take the risk, play safe. Okay, it's very simple. All right. There you go, it's done, all right? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed that. If you want to see more of my content, all right, you want to keep the content running, you can join as a channel member. It feeds my family, keeps the lights on in my house, keeps the bills paid. Uh, you can drop a tip via link in the description of the video. You can send super thanks on YouTube or purchase Asian robot merchandise, up to you. And let's move over to our thank you scene. Here's the Thorn of Honor, Puni Puni only fan, Real British Robot only fan, JP Best Prestige, Zach NFG Prestige, The Forgotten Prestige, and Nate the Great Prestige. Thank you so much. The list will update, of course, on the weekend. December's top supporters, Bravo7910, Crampy D, Johnny Nara, FNX Killer 43 Zavi Uzumaki, Randomo, Alien Fast 80 Kazmanta, my lovely girl, Zach NFG, Soul Crack, Galaxy Train, Calvin Maxi, Puni Puni, Rogue Assassin, I'm a Boxhead, Viper91, and Real British Robot. I appreciate all of you. Thank you very much, and I'll see you all on the next one. Actually, wait, you know what? You know what? No, I'm not going to see you all on the next one, because guess what? I'm going to flex right now. I got my last fucking heroic crown. So yeah, flexing. I've been cycling on your chick. La da da da. Okay, thank you guys. See you on the next one.